Hello interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. We've got another liquid damaged MacBook Pro here. Uh, this is quite an old one, this is an 08 model, so it's pretty old and grossy. Um, so you can see on the back of the cover here, we've got loads of staining around here and around the uh, latch mechanism. Uh, so we can see there's been a fair bit of liquid ingress into the laptop. Um, the symptoms we've got are, uh, it does switch on, however, there's no power while the battery is connected. So either the battery is wrecked or there's some, there's some kind of corrosion or short around on the underside of the battery circuit down here. Um, then we've also got visible staining um, around the display connector. So uh, when we tested this one and found it turned on, we did actually get quite lucky there because if you get corrosion or a short on the display connector, it's going to blow up your backlight circuit. So um, um, we're going to just strip and clean this whole laptop. Um, I mean, we could just clean up this bit here and then have a look at the battery, but the whole thing is really grotty. So I'm just gonna take the whole thing apart and go from there. So I'm just gonna take this out first. Where this thing is so old, there are bits of this that are just falling apart, quite frankly. This little strip here, that's supposed to be stuck to here. So um, I guess we could find out if we can reattach any of those. We don't have to, because it's all held in by interference anyway, but we'll see. First of all though, I'm gonna take out, uh, gonna take out the DVD drive, um, we'll take off the display assembly and then we'll take out the logic board and we'll just do a full strip down. Let's do it! So much dust and just grot in this thing. Right. Okay, so that connector is fine and the base is pretty much fine. So I'll give that a quick hit with the air compressor and that will be ready to reassemble and then we'll clean up that logic board. Okay, so we've got a fairly sketchy patch down the bottom here where the, um, uh, where the DC in jack connects, and that is directly on the other side from the display connector. Um, there's no major signs of problems around the battery connector. However, I'm not sure where the main charging circuit is on this particular board. Um, it's probably, these are all, this looks power related down here. So it's quite possible that this is what's causing our issue with the battery not working. So we're gonna have a quick look at a schematic just so we can see what the damaged area is there and see if that's relating to the battery. Okay, so this is an 830-2327 board. And if we just zoom in on this bottom corner, which is around here. So let's just see what, what are these caps doing? So that's LCD backlight. LCD backlight, and that's probably the diode for the backlight. 
Yeah, so this is all backlight area. So again, holy crap, they're lucky. This is all backlight. I'm amazed that there's been no shorter ground on the backlight here. Uh, what about this? Is this, yeah, this is all backlight. Uh, all LVDS there as well. So this is all backlight circuit. However, so they've been super lucky there, but it's nothing to do with charging. So um, so that's that's nothing to do with the power, the main power lines. So I'm wrong about that. So let's give that a quick clean up uh, and then we can move on because this is no longer relevant. This is an area that works just fine. So I'm just gonna squirt a little bit of alcohol onto that just so it looks a bit tidier. All right, so that's fine. Let's do the same thing on this side and have a look at what this area is. Right, so this area here that looks skanky, that's all DC in. Um, so we don't have a problem with DC in. However, again, all this stuff, if there's any issues with the power system, that could be the reason why it doesn't like charging. Uh, or the battery just could be shagged, we'll find out in a minute. But yeah, this is all charger stuff. So, you know, problems around this area are gonna give us problems all over. Let's tidy that up. So, once again, I'm just gonna use a little bit of alcohol on this. You can also use um, stuff like glass cleaner, just anything that's a mild cleaning agent and will evaporate quickly is what you need. Um, alcohol is best, but if you don't have that, glass cleaner will do. Oof. That power fet looks really nasty. I might just reflow that because I, because I can. Because those are some really shabby connections. Let's see if we can get a close up of that so you can see what I mean. All right, so you can see the quality of the connections we've got there now. Um, and also just this area is still a little bit skanky. Let's just go around that. There we go, that's better. Um, right, so let's, firstly, let's find out what that is because this fella on the end here, that looks like it's actually disconnected. That looks like it's gone. So let's just quickly look up what that is. So that is pin one. So this is not um, the end of the world losing pin one because we've got three pins all on the same line there. That's all uh, PPV, PPVDC in G3 hot. So it's okay to lose one of those pins. Um, four and five are the important ones there because those, those are the outputs from this thing. So um, uh, we're okay with one of those being disconnected. It's why it still works. But I am just going to reflow that just because that is all pretty nasty. So uh, let's fire up the hot air station. God damn it, uh, I forgot to change the camera view. So we just, we just, uh, I just took that off, as you can see. So um, we're now gonna clean up that site and then we'll solder it back on again. So. So those pads are pretty fucked. However, we can bring them back, I believe, because this entire plane here is all on the same area. So if I just do a little bit of scratching, I think we will find those pads again. All right, so our pads are back. Let's tin them up and see if we can get a connection. Now remember, the first three pins on this thing are all linked. So this pin, this pin, and this pin are all linked. So we don't need to worry about any cross flow there. If those all just join up in the blob, that's fine. We don't care. 
Now the FET itself is not particularly healthy, but we'll see if we can just make good on that. There we go. Right, I've just deliberately solder, solder blobbed on the back there, so we connected up to all three pins on the back of the set. So let's just tidy up with a little bit of alcohol again, just to get rid of that flux. All right, let's drop this board back in and we'll see if we've got our battery back. Okay, right, so that stuff is in place. Let's have a quick look at this DVD drive because it has a DVD stuck in it, or a CD, who knows which. Uh, so we're gonna quickly recover that. No idea if the drive works or not. Um, will the, um, the drive uh, anti-jam mechanism looks jammed? <laughs> if I just, let's just sort out the focus on this so you can see what's going on with this thing. Okay, so on the entrance of this slot load disc, um, this little bit here, this rises up, it comes up like that when there is a disc in the drive to prevent you from pushing another disc in there. However, it itself appears to be jammed behind there. So I'm just gonna try and see if I can hook that over the top, like that. And what I might do now is I might just power up the drive and just see if it can manually eject the CD on its own. Because um, if it can, then that shows that the drive is okay. Whereas if it still can't eject the drive now, the drive is probably wrecked and will just manually extract the disc from there and just uh, the customer will just have to not use it. Unless they want to buy a new DVD drive. But I wouldn't recommend that on this old thing anyway. So let's drop that back in. Okay, right, display assembly back on. Let's just quickly tidy up this uh, connector. So I'm just gonna drown my, um, my toothbrush in alcohol. And we're just gonna scrub that down. That was too much alcohol. It'll be okay though. The great thing about alcohol is it evaporates. We'll give this thing a proper clean once it's back on the computer. Okay, let's power this thing up and just see if that DVD drive works first. All right, we still have green light. We still have fan spin. And we have chime. So let's just drop into the boot menu. And then we'll see if this DVD drive is going to eject for us. Hey! Nice. Real nice. 
Uh, cool. Okay then. Right, so that DVD drive is now fine. And let's just see if that ejects again, having loaded up. Okay, so DVD drive is sorted, device still powers on. Let's see if we've got the battery back. So. Right, do we have a battery indicator? No, we don't, that's a bad sign. Battery indicator should always work. It should always give a rapid flash if there's no power. Let's see if we still have a green light with the battery connected. We have a green light. We have an orange light. Okay, so it's possible the battery was just stone flat. And the battery indicator has come back to life. So it looks like the battery was just stone flat there. Um, so what we're gonna do now, I'm gonna leave that to put some charge into itself and then we'll see if it runs on the battery. All right, so this thing's been on for probably a couple of hours now. Um, however, we're still only seeing one bar, one flashing light on the battery meter. So let's just get it onto the boot menu and just see if it'll actually run on the battery. I think the battery is going to be goosed and then it'll be up to the customer as to whether they want to replace it or not. However, since the laptop runs with the battery in place, there's no actual fault there. So power out. Okay, there we go. So the battery is functional. That's good enough for me. So uh, if the customer wants to replace the battery, they can, but the laptop and the battery circuit does actually work. So I'm calling that job done. So last thing I need to do now is just um, uh, is stick the hard drive back in and um, get everything cleaned up. The hard drive actually came with no screws in it, so we're gonna add some of those. Thankfully I have some spares. There we go. So this thing's gonna be absolutely fine. So not a huge amount wrong with it. What we've done in this instance is we've just cleaned up an existing spill and prevented it from turning into a bigger problem in the future. Now, as I mentioned, this thing did already turn on when we started. So this is not a complete mind-blowing repair. However, we did see the damage around the power input and that could have turned into something nasty because the joints on that, uh, the joints on that MOSFET that we reflowed were completely goosed. So those probably would have just eaten away and then died. And that, at that point, we would see this laptop cease to work after, I don't know, a couple of days, a couple of weeks, who knows? So what we've done is we've just reflowed all of that to make sure that this thing doesn't go wrong in the future. And with that in mind, we're all finished. So thank you very much for watching everyone. I'll see you all next time. Goodbye for now.